That tomorrow isn't here right now, baby An absent mind came to roam around Captured you in a foggy cloud, baby Standing on my toes on the edge I'm ready to go See it clear when the shadows are lit I'm ready to go Hey everybody, this is Dan with Adventure Today. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for being here today. Uh, today I've got a great review for you of a RV, which is what I'm driving right now. I rented this to come visit some clients down in Texas. And uh, currently I'm staying at the Vineyards Campground in Grapevine, Texas. And this is just an awesome, beautiful campground. If you're ever around this area and can stay here for a couple days, do it. This is in a great part of Dallas. There's phenomenal restaurants all around you here and the campground is just gorgeous. I'm actually on a peninsula and there are maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 campsites here, but these are the, to me, the best campsites in the campground. I'm going to do a little bit, bit, of, bit of a campground review here in another video, but as you can see, this place is busy. I made this reservation about two months ago and I actually was able to get the exact campsite that I wanted and reserve it. It was like only an extra $10 to preserve this exact campground, but it is a really, really beautiful place. So, um, anyway, let's get, let's get onto the RV. So what do we have for you today? Well, this is a Thor Gemini 24 KB and it is an awesome little unit. This is a B plus unit. So for those of you that may not be familiar with this, it's just a step down from a C class, but it is loaded with every feature you could ever imagine in an RV. I've driven several class A motorhomes. I've driven class C motorhomes. I've owned a travel trailer. I've owned a really nice North Point fifth wheel. And uh, this one is just got everything in it. So first off, you know, there's a couple of reasons why people buy a, a, a motorhome of this size. One, it's only about five feet longer than an extended length SUV, like an Expedition extended length or a Yukon extended length. So it's not that much longer. You can drive it to the grocery store. I went out to dinner last night with some clients to an, a, a really nice Mexican restaurant down here and got some Tex-Mex. I had no problem finding a parking place with this. It does take up two spots, but you know, you can drive it pretty much anywhere you need to get through, short of like a drive through at McDonald's or something like that. So the chassis is on the Ford Transit chassis, and one of the one of the dynamics of this motorhome is how it drives. It is a really, really easy driving vehicle. Um, my wife has always been a little bit scared about driving our, our motorhomes or our travel trailers or our fifth wheel, and um, she would have no problem driving this. It is really, really easy. It's almost like just driving a dually down the highway. It just tracks straight as can be, and uh, it's really, really simple to drive. It's powered by Ford's EcoBoost 3.5 liter V6 motor and then a little bit of a detuned version. Now I've got this engine, the most updated version of it. This is a 2024 model, so this is an updated version of this uh, tune on the EcoBoost. But in my F-150, um, I've got 400 horsepower and 500 pounds of torque. This is detuned a little bit due to the way that this truck is being used. So this has 310 horsepower and 400 pounds of torque. My guess is it actually has a little bit more than that with the way this thing feels, how it goes down the road. Uh, but it, it's got all-wheel drive. It's an intelligent all-wheel drive system. So as you accelerate and pull away from an intersection or if the, if the engine downshifts to go up a hill, it will engage the front tires but it's always trying to get it into rear wheel drive to maximize fuel efficiency. And so, you know, 90, 95% of the time going down the highway, you're gonna be in rear wheel drive only. Uh, but when you do need that extra traction, you can engage the front wheels and you have driving modes on this vehicle too. So you've got an off-road mode, you've got mud and ruts, you've got slippery conditions. Um, you also have an economy mode, you've got normal driving and you've got a tall hole mode. So you've got a lot of different driving options with how you can make the transmission and the engine work together and how you can control the four wheel drive system on the vehicle. Um, we're averaging about 13 miles to the gallon. I'm gonna do another video on gas mileage on this too. So you'll have that a full in depth review. And some of the nice features about how it drives, um, it's got really powerful projector beam headlights. These are by Xenon. They, are, they put a lot of light down the road. They also have an auto high beam feature. 
So if there's no traffic in front of you, it automatically goes to high beam. It works really good. I haven't been flashed one time by other drivers, so I know I'm not blinding them. Um, it also, when you turn left or you turn right, these fog lights will kick on in an extra bright, bright mode to light up the side of the road so that you can um, see into your turns, which is uh, really, really nice. And in fact, it might not be the fog lights that do that. It may be an aspect of the turning indicators up here. I'm not 100% sure about that, so don't quote me on that. But I, but I do know that when you turn, it really lights it up to the left and the right so you can see. Um, great tow mirrors and these mirrors in Ford fashion are just probably the best in the business. You automatically get these um, this convex mirror down here so you can really see the road while you're driving plus the upper mirror to see traffic so you can really get a feel for where you are in your lines and so forth and keeping in your lane. Uh, there's just a lot of things I could say about how the truck drives. It, it really drives great. Now as an RV, this thing is loaded. It is just a phenomenal piece of machinery. So let's talk about the outside real quick. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on some of these features because if anybody's serious about getting something like this, you will want a more in-depth review. Now I just flushed the tanks and it's a very, very simple process. So under, under this trap door is where your um, connection is. And you've got a simple gray and a black um, handle here. It covers the gray and it covers the black and it's really, really easy. Um, it's on the side of the RV, obviously that's closest to where you want to dump. And you've got a great black flush that you connect your water into your black tank flush, which is right here. And it actually works really good. I just tried it and it did not take long to clear those tanks out and get them running very, very clean. Very little toilet paper um, was coming out you know, once I had it clear, so there wasn't a lot of residue left in there, just everything flushed out right the first time, and I was able to, you know, get onto something that's a lot more fun than doing that. Um, your city water connection is right up here, so if you want to just bring water into the unit and only use the water connection and not use the freshwater tank, that's what this is for. You've got a 30 amp hook up here, you've got a connection for a TV right here. Nice and convenient. Now, the one thing that I, I thought was gonna be an issue, but it really wasn't, I've got a standard length water hose here. And as you can tell, I'm probably four feet maybe from maybe five feet from the water source, is if you wanna fill that fresh water tank, it's actually on this side of the unit. And I'm sure there's a mechanical or structural reason why they did that, but it's right here. And it doesn't have a, um, it's not threaded. So you have to hold the hose in there, which is why I left that open for you remind me to tell you that so um i kind of like that because oftentimes and you've probably seen this before if you've camped enough people will start filling up their tanks and they walk away and they forget and water is just pouring out underneath the rv this kind of forces you to not waste that water so it's a really nice design feature that they put into it um, these are the exhaust for the heater that is on the unit uh, the first night I, I had this unit out it was got down to 39 degrees and that little heater, it just kept it nice and toasty inside. It was, it really did a good job. Um, so I don't forget to mention this, this unit also has heated tanks. So you don't see that very often in units of this size, but it's got heated tanks too. So while we're over on this side, um, this is extra storage here that is lighted. Um, it's really nice about the size of a, a suitcase that you would maybe take onto an airplane if you wanted to, um, you know, carry on with you. It can fit something about that size right there. Um, this is outdoor propane. So if you want to hook up a grill, you're on the, the, I think the right side to be doing things like that. So that was really smart in how they did that. And then over here, you've got some electrical connections too, which are fantastic. Of course, those are GFIs. Storage is awesome. I mean, these RV manufacturers do such a great job. Um, one thing about the Thor Gemini that I'm gonna probably mention when I get inside also is the hinges. I just never, I've never in my life have seen an RV that has hinges as heavy duty as the hinges that are on this RV. I mean, they are just phenomenal. Thor just spends extra money on things like hinges and so forth. And um, because that's where a lot of problems can happen down the road. And so they uh, spend the extra money on that to keep everything in alignment and make sure you don't have any problems with doors and so forth. So you've got three ways to access this storage area. Um, before we go over to the other side of the RV for a couple more things, I wanted to talk about towing capability. 
This unit can tow 5,000 pounds and it have, has a seven pin connection right here. So if you've got a, and a four pin right down here. So if you've got a trailer brakes, you can hook that up and uh, tows 5,000 pounds. So it's a pretty, pretty hefty amount of weight that you can tow. You can tow a car behind that, tow a trailer with some um, a four wheelers and so forth. I mean, you've got lots of, lots of good options with that, that weight capacity. Over here is your propane storage. It's a 40 pound propane storage, nice and convenient. It's got a little meter on here to tell you where you are. I've used the heater two nights in a row and I'm still, it was seven eighths full when I got it and I'm really just about still seven eighths full. I mean, it's really, really efficient. Um, over here, you've got an outdoor shower. This is gonna be your tankless water heater. So it has a tankless water heater on it, unlimited hot water, and it is nice and hot. And so it's really, really effective. Um, beautiful mirrors on it. It's got a great siding. It's got a nice shiny appearance to it. And I think the paint scheme is, is pretty fantastic. It does have awning toppers on it. So this is a slide out that I have in right now. And um, it does have an awning topper on it, which again is something that you don't see in a lot of different RVs, which is absolutely fantastic. Now on the roof, you've got a wind gate connection right there. Wind guard, I should say. Wine guard, however you pronounce that. It also has a solar panel up here. So there's four ways that this unit charges the coach batteries, which you'll find underneath this step right here. Um, those coach batteries, the main reason why this is important in my opinion, is to keep your 12 volt refrigerator cool. And I'll show you that here in a few seconds. Very, very efficient refrigerator. So I um, was out to dinner last night and we were probably gone three and a half, four hours and I didn't turn the generator on at all on this unit. And I still had like 12.8 volts of electricity on the batteries when I came out to check it. And that I've got ice in the, in the freezer and they were still super cold. Nothing was melting and working off those batteries. Now, like I say, there's four ways that those batteries stay trickle charged. One is when you're driving down the road, it charges those batteries. Second way is when you plug in like I am now, they charges those batteries. The third way is through the solar panel up on top trickle charges those batteries and then the fourth way is if you want to run the generator that's on the unit it will also charge those batteries and that generator will do everything it'll run the air conditioner it'll run all the lights it'll run the microwave everything at the same time you don't have to play with your power controls or anything like that you can just live like you're completely plugged into a 30 amp hookup off that generator and it runs off the gasoline that's inside the engine so you don't have a separate tank to worry about. As long as you keep your fuel tank at least 25% full or more, that generator will work. If it gets down to a quarter tank, then uh, the generator is not gonna use gasoline from the engine, it will turn off. So you, it leaves enough range for you to go and get filled up. So if you're gonna be using the generator, you know, probably make sure your tank is pretty full if you're, if you're gonna be using it a lot. So on this side of the RV, you've got a couple more windows on here and uh, you've got a nice, beautiful awning. This is a frameless awning, so it's only secured at the top. Very, very strong. Don't take that the wrong way, very, very strong. But it's, I'm six foot seven and I constantly hit my head on these awning bars and so forth. So this is all at the very top and it is a really, really nice modern unit. So with that, let's jump inside and I'll show you a few things. But oftentimes when I do videos like this, I like to really show you how things work. And so that's what I'm going to do with the slide out right now. So in order to get the slide out to come out, doesn't matter if you're plugged into power, doesn't matter if you're running the generator, you have to have the truck running. So I've got the truck idling right now and you have to have the emergency brake on, which is right here in order to operate the slide. So see if we can make this, you're probably not gonna be able to see this very good because of the light. But on this BM Pro con uh, controller, you just go to the slide out and we hit retract. And then you'll be able to see, I'm sorry, extend with the right button. And then you can see how quickly this retracts. This is a Schwintech system, which to me isn't a great system on really, really big slides. Like if they contain a refrigerator, or, um, I mean, our fifth wheel, our Schwintech slide had a refrigerator, it had the oven, the stove, the microwave, a pantry, 
the television, the electric fireplace, everything was on that Schwintek slide. And I'm telling you, if one was going to get hung up, it was it was that one. It was just like overweighted, you know. But on this size unit, it's just a two-seat chair. It works fantastic. And it's really quick, and it really does open up the space. Now, you've got a table you can put in here that's stored behind the unit so that um, if you want, you know, like a dinette, you can uh, you can get a cup holder here, and you've got a, an easy way to eat and enjoy a meal. You also have storage, uh, charging storage and charging ports everywhere. So you've got a little storage here and a charging port. You've got huge storage right here um, to put things that are that you need to get, you know, quickly. Maybe keep tools up here, blankets, extra pillows, whatever it, whatever it might be. You also have a great sunroof. Now the control for that is right here, extend and retract. And so let's pull this open real quick. You see how it works? And it's an awesome sunroof. I mean, I like leaving that open when I'm driving. It uh, It's really, really nice. So I'm going to turn the truck off here in just a second. But I did want you to see the screen. So this does have Ford's Sync navigation system on it. Now the navigation, because of the RV, I believe the antenna is disconnected. So you do have access to CarPlay, which is really nice. And um, Apple CarPlay would be right here. Android Auto is also here. And I don't have my phone turned on, so you can't really see anything. But but this is how I've been using uh, my navigation, and it is phenomenal. It just it works every single time. These are your drive modes right here. You have a little drive mode uh, button. So normal, eco, slippery, tow haul, mud, and ruts. Um, you can just push these buttons, and it will give you a fun little graphic and then it will shift into whatever that mode is here's eco this will probably be green yep you got tow and haul probably a bunch of gears or something like that yep there you go mud and ruts can't remember what this one is but you know kind of fun little off-road scene right there a little mud <laughs> um and then here's the controls for the uh the, you know the dashboard for the vehicle so it's got radar based cruise control um it's got you can see the gas mileage that i've been getting 13.5 miles per gallon over the last 120 miles and i'd say the last 30 of those miles were in town driving so um like and i'm on the highway i'm driving about three miles per hour under the speed limit but i will not go over 67 miles per hour so if the speed limit's 75 i'm still going 67 that's just where this unit is its happiest um tons and tons of storage so you've got more charging ports there this whole dashboard has storage in it. Place here for the sunglasses. Cup holders here. Another cup holder there. Another cup holder there. All kinds of storage in the door. And then the same thing on this side. Another, another cup holder there. More storage down in the doors. I mean, it's just loaded. Loaded with storage. Um, you've got more electricity down here. So we're talking about charging ports, right? Another charging port right here. You can set your phone on this or you can pull this little rubber um you know plug out and you've got two extra ports right here you've got a pop-up charging port right here a really nice kitchenette this is a i didn't bring a plastic garbage can because this is just a rental but you can put a plastic garbage can in there that's what this is designed for and that's where you can keep your trash a lot of rvs don't have space for that especially rvs this size lots of drawer, drawer storage all over the place um big one down here i gotta just put a big old case of water down there microwave a two burner grill you got a little glass piece right here to kind of protect the cabinetry from any heat or steam that's coming off of the the stove um, you got a beautiful stainless steel sink you've got tons and tons of storage up here again i'm running this so it's you know there's not much in these, these different spaces because it's just me on the road but lots and lots of storage and then here's the fridge so a nice size refrigerator, pull out drawers, places to store things. It also has these little flip up um, stops so that your cans and things like that just don't come rolling out as you're driving down the highway. It's got a nice secure locking mechanism on it. That door is not opening. It's a metal lock that is a latch that is um, really, really strong. Same thing with the uh, freezer right here. And you can see this ice is just hard as can be it's working fantastic this is your heater uh, to pump out heat which is kind of interesting it's right below the fridge but that's it's where it is now one thing they did that i thought was super intelligent about this heater let me jump in here real quick 
is that these doors for the bathroom open up and they lock. Remember I said how good Thor is with their latches and so forth? Same thing goes with their magnet connections. I mean, that is a nice, strong magnet. It's not moving. You have to tug on it a little bit to get it to, to close or to disconnect. Well, when this door is open, it is actually directing heat into the bathroom. So you ever jump out of the shower on a cool morning and you're a little bit cool, a little bit cold? Not so much with this because you got heat that's coming right into the bathroom. And then when you're in the bathroom, this other door opens up and it latches open also. So it also provides you with a little more privacy in here, but more space so you've got a little bit of elbow room to brush your teeth. Okay, I mentioned the incredible hinges a few minutes ago, but then I recorded the rest of the video and I forgot to actually talk about the other hinges that I thought were super impressive. And this one is really gonna be hard to see, but this is a piano style hinge on the bathroom door that goes literally from all the way to the bottom all the way to the top i mean this is incredibly stable and secure and both doors have the same technology i mean it is really it is really something else um so and then the other thing i wanted to show you was every single one of these cabinets have these incredibly strong hinges and I'm gonna put a picture on here so you can see this a little bit better. But I mean, look at the way that is mounted to the cabinet. There are six different uh, screws on the left-hand side. There's three on each side, and then there's four on the actual door side on a total. There's two on each side. And then the mechanism is just really cool, the way it works. And so it holds itself at the top, then that hinge also has a slow dampening function that holds itself down at the bottom. I mean, that is not coming out. And not only that, you get three of them per door. I mean, normally you would see maybe two of these hinges on there um, that were really actually cheap hinges. I always have trouble with these on RVs, is these cheap hinges they put on these cabinets. And the, Thor puts on three of these mechanisms that are really screwed in well. I mean, it's just not going anywhere. So that's what I'm talking about with hinges. They're, they've done a one heck of a job. The bathroom obviously is going to be a little bit smaller. I've got my towels up here, but I'm six foot seven. I can stand up inside that shower. My head goes into the dome a little bit, so I've got to bend over to get the get my hair, the soap out of my hair. But you know, I'm in here for five or ten minutes. If I'm going to have space that's a little bit smaller, it's okay if this is a little bit smaller because I'm spending 99.99% of the time everywhere else inside this RV. Um, the toilet is nice. It's up a little bit, which I like. Uh, probably one thing that I would relocate is this paper towel holder. It does kind of get in the way of your legs a little bit, but it's got a nice size sink, more storage down here and so forth. And then you have a nice little medicine cabinet up here for, uh, for more storage. So, and behind here, obviously, more storage. Towel holders everywhere. I'm using the handles on that one right there, but you've got a towel holder here, towel holder here, towel holder here. And uh, then you can also use this as a towel holder, which is what I've been doing to kind of keep my towels dry. All right, so going into the bedroom, what's really cool about this is lots of windows, but also lots of storage. And so you have a ton of storage up here. The DVD player for this television and then more storage all around. Just, it's awesome. There's also a 12 volt port right there that you can use for more uh, charging. You've got electricity right there. You've got a light right there. A um, Couple more light reading lights, more storage, more storage, more electricity, more charging ports. I mean, it's just everywhere. So this bed is also pretty cool because this these two pieces here in the middle lift out kind of hard to do with one hand, but these lift out and you can have two twin beds um, or you can put both of these pieces down and have one giant bed. Now, this way, it's a little bigger than a, than a king. Um, so what I did is I just took two flat sheets and they actually, a king size flat sheet covers this perfectly. You can actually have enough room to like tuck in the sides to kind of hold them in place. A fitted sheet is a little too small. So I don't know if Thor sells an actual sheet that will fit this, a fitted sheet that would fit it, 
but um, but that's what I did. I just used two flat sheets, one on the bottom, one that I slept under, and then my comforter, and I'm 100% comfortable. It's uh, it's really nice. Now this these are really thick cushions that um, you know I don't know like those teddy bear cushions they put in bunk rooms. It's probably 10 times thicker than that, <laughs> and it's actually pretty comfortable. Um, not as comfortable as a fancy mattress that you might have at home, but in an RV, this definitely gets the job done. But you've got a nice little um, soft backboard there, so if you want to lean up, watch some television and so forth before you go to bed, it's really comfortable. Um, this does have cup holders built into this one, so you could flip this over that way and um, use that as cup holders if you want to have a drink to you in, in, at night. And then just put a twin sheet and mattress uh, a cover over each one of these beds and then you could have a place for your cup. So there's just lots of flexibility with how you might want to use this room. Um, here's the air conditioning system. Um, it also has ducted air conditioning, which I think is fantastic. So there are three air conditioning ports right here, right in the ceiling. Now this is a, a racetrack air conditioning system. Uh, and then you also have the main unit right here. What's also neat about this is you get four more units up here and they're working great. I've got it running and you can tell it's not that loud at all. And the air conditioning is on full blast. So you got a beautiful mirror right here. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was this extra storage. So here is your wardrobe. And then you've got two more drawers down here with, uh, with more storage. So this is your fuse box, fuses. And then you've got storage down there. And there's also, if you can see that, there's another storage drawer right there. So, I mean, what did they forget on this unit? I have no idea. I just, I can't figure it out. They, um, they really did an amazing job designing it, thinking about space. You know, Thor's got a lot of experience in the RV world. And um, they have really, really done a great job of designing this unit right here. One thing I love about these B-plus units is... They're more fuel efficient. You can take them pretty much anywhere you want to go, but yet you're not giving up on any of the comfort features that you might have in a much more expensive motorhome or high-end fifth wheel trailer. I mean, everything is packed into this unit at a lower price, fuel efficiency, easy to drive, and uh, in all the comforts of home. So anyway, with that, hope you enjoyed this video. Appreciate y'all being here today. Please share, like, and and uh, hit that bell if you want. We'd love to uh, have you around for more videos, but we will talk to you soon and uh, have a good day. Thanks, bye-bye. Took some time, but we pointed out that tomorrow isn't here right now, baby. An absent mind came to roam around. Captured you in a foggy cloud, baby Standing on my toes on the edge I'm ready to go See it clear when the shadows are lit I'm ready to go Oh